çok üstü. <gülüyor> If you watched last week's video, then you'll know that every week for the month of June, I'm going to be making an LGBT-themed video, because it is Pride Month. It's something that I'm really excited for, because I wanted to do this for literally years now, <laughs> and I wanted to do this video specifically for a really long time, but the first year that I had my YouTube channel, I just wasn't really confident in my art or my video-making skills, and then the second year that I had my YouTube channel, I was in the middle of moving from New York to Florida, so there was a lot going on, but this year I am determined <laughs> to get it done. So in this video, I am going to be taking the different pride flags and turning them into characters. This probably isn't an original idea, but it's just something that I've really wanted to do for a while now, and over on Instagram I asked you guys what you wanted to see from me during Pride Month, and this was suggested by a couple of people. So first of all, glad we're on the same page, <laughs> and second of all, that probably just means that somebody else has done it and they want to see me do it, but either way, I'm really excited to be able to do this. It's something that I've been really excited for for a long time now. Characterizing the gay pride flag was actually the hardest one <laughs> out of all of them, because all of the flags have like a specific color theme, but the gay flag is just rainbow, <laughs> and like a solid character design has a limited color scheme and so when you're looking with literally every color it can be kind of hard to make a character design that looks cohesive and make something that works like it's very rare that you can use a literal rainbow as your color scheme and have it look good so in the end to kind of make it work a little bit more i picked the cooler colors to make them more prominent in the design and then i made the warmer colors kind of more accents and I also desaturated all of the colors. As far as like the actual design goes, like the visual design aside from the colors came really easily. It was just the color scheme that I was really struggling with. But in the end, I think it looks all right. The color scheme is, scheme. <laughs> the color scheme is definitely the hardest part of this character specifically. And even though I decided to desaturate the colors to make them a little bit less of an eyesore, I still had a really hard time deciding where to put what colors. I decided to give the skin tone a little bit of kind of like purple undertones <laughs> just because there was just- I didn't want there to be too many colors and so I really relied on like- kind of relied on the skin color and the hair color and stuff like that to kind of help me limit the color scheme a little bit more. I just didn't- I don't want to put a lot of colors in the clothes or anything like that because it would just come off as too busy. But overall, I'm quite happy with how this one turned out. I think he turned out pretty cool. The lesbian character, I am so, so happy <laughs> with how that one turned out. She's honestly one of my favorites, if not my favorite, <laughs> in this entire thing. If you're unaware, there are actually two lesbian flags. There's the one that's just the pink gradient, which is the original one, and then there's one that's kind of like pink and orange, which is a newer one. And so I was kind of, like, stuck between which one I should use. And in the end, I decided to do a combination of both of them, because the original one, I feel like, is more identical identifiable as a lesbian flag, but I also wanted to include the new one because I do think that people should start using that one. So for the color scheme of the character, I made it mostly of the original lesbian pride flag, but I also made her handbag have a pattern of the new one, and then I also made the color overlay that I normally do in my illustrations, I made that one more of the colors of the newer lesbian pride flag. And this one I kind of had the opposite problem that I had <laughs> with the gay character, because through this one, Deciding like the design of like the hair and the clothes and stuff like that was actually like the hardest part for me But then once I had that stuff figured out making the color scheme was actually really easy I decided to make her on the more feminine side because when you look at the lesbian pride flags Regardless of which one you're looking at they have kind of a feminine color scheme I guess because of the pink gradient and stuff and since pink is a color that represents femininity I just decided to go down that route I really love <laughs> the way that the skirt came out. I don't know, just like the way that the skirt looks, it looks like she's actually sitting down, which is neat. <laughs> I just feel like the skirt has a lot of dimension to it, and I'm just really proud of how that turned out. I'm also really proud of the shading, because if you've seen my other digital art, I don't blend a whole lot. And I don't think I did a whole lot of blending in this one either, but I did more blending than what I would normally do. When I would normally do blending, it would kind of just be like really cheap, like knockoff blending. <laughs> I wouldn't actually like blend it, I would just use the airbrush tool on like the transparent brush setting and then just kind of smooth out some of the edges, which I guess works, but you know, it was just like a quick way to kind of replicate blending without actually having to do it. 
but I added some blending here and there. I think specifically on the legs is where I did it. I used the same brush, but I lowered the density. And so it was kind of transparent, but also kind of not. And it was able to blend those colors really easily. And that's the first time that I've ever really done anything like that. And I think it was really fun to play around with. I could definitely see myself using that technique in the future. Something that I tried to incorporate a little bit in the other drawings, but I think this is the one with the most blending. Honestly, I'm really happy with all of these, but this one's definitely a really big favorite of mine. The bi character, I actually have like really mixed feelings on <laughs> because I feel like I like most of the design, but something just feels off about it and I can't really put my finger on what. When the design came into my mind, I was really happy with it and I was really excited to make it, but then by the time I had finished drawing this illustration, I don't know, I just looked at it and something didn't seem quite right. And I think it's the colors, because even though like the bi flag has a nice color scheme to it and like all three of those colors look really nice together, and three colors is usually what I try and go for in making like a character design. First I thought that it needed a little bit more contrast and so I tweaked the colors that I had a little bit but something still was off. Maybe that just means it needs more contrast, maybe it means that contrast wasn't the issue. I don't really know. <laughs> I think that changing the hues would have really like benefited this and I said earlier that I did like play around with the hues a little bit but I think that playing around with them more and just playing around with the hues all together instead of individually might have helped it look a little bit more cohesive and I also think that adding more purple would have been nice because I didn't really add like purple purple I added like a subtle purple hint in like the hair and the coat I didn't really add purple outright and I think if I were to have done that it would have helped the drawing a little bit more. And I think another big problem with it is that I kind of thought of an aesthetic for the character without like keeping the color scheme in mind. And so I was trying to like make that color scheme fit the aesthetic, which can sometimes work, but I feel like to make it work you would have to play around with it a lot more than I did. So that's definitely another regret that I have about this piece. I think it's something that I should have thought about a little bit more before going into it because it felt kind of like rushed as far as like thinking about it to putting it to paper. It's not an idea that I was like sitting on. But I'm not super thrilled with the color scheme in this one. But I think if you were to take away the colors, I think the lineup looks really cool. I really like his hair and his outfit and stuff. At this point, I was also kind of struggling with poses <laughs> because I wanted them all to be like sitting there just to make them seem like cohesive. But also it's like I didn't want the poses to seem a little bit too repetitive. So maybe that was another reason I kind of fell flat with this one because I was just like forcing myself to make it different. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that even makes any sense, but you know, I don't hate it by any means. I still like the illustration. It's just not my favorite out of this group. Let me know what you guys think about this because even now looking at it, I just think that there's something kind of off about it and I'm not quite sure what I would do to fix it. Pansexual one is also one of my favorites. I just think that she turned out so freaking adorable. <laughs> the image of this girl has been in my head for forever because like I was saying in the intro, this is a video that I had wanted to make for literally years <laughs> and this was a design that has just been in my head and so I'm really happy to finally make her. The pansexual pride flag, at least to me, screams space buns and I love drawing space buns and so I needed to do that. I don't know, I think that the colors in this flag would make really cool like multicolored hair. And in my mind, when I think multicolored hair, I think space buns. I don't know why, maybe because it, there's just two of them, but <laughs> to me, multicolored hair equals space buns if you have hair long enough to do space buns. I don't know, that's just where my mind went. I decided to make the outfit like different shades of blue with like different shades of yellow in it to kind of contrast the hair because the hair is like pink and yellow and so I decided to make the outfit mostly blue and yellow and then to kind of add a little bit more pink in there I gave her dark pink eyes and then more of like a pinkish skin tone. I had quite a bit of a difficult time drawing the feet in this one just because of like the angle that the feet were at. The foot that's kind of hidden behind the other foot is actually like the easier angle to draw <laughs> so it's kind of a shame that most of it is hidden behind the other foot but that front foot you probably saw in the sketching phase that I had quite a bit of trouble with that. <laughs> I just couldn't seem to get the angle quite right. In the end, I think that it's still off a little bit, but I'm still really satisfied with the way that this drawing came out. Making the color overlay was a little bit difficult because at least in my opinion, if you take a color like yellow 
and put it as an overlay, it can look a little weird <laughs> because yellow is just such a bright color. And so I had a little bit of a difficult time trying to like work around that. I think I believe in the end I decided to go with a little bit more of an orange than a yellow and I think it turned out quite nice. And also the color overlay just changed the color of the blue a lot. It would always make it seem more green <laughs> and so I had to work around that. But in the end, I was able to make it look nice, I think. Honestly, I don't think that there's any part of this drawing that I can say that I really dislike, even though there were parts where it was a little bit more difficult to draw. I think that even if it's not perfect, it's still one of my favorites. I was going to say my favorite, but I also really like the lesbian one, but just ignore everything I'm saying. <laughs> the character made after the trans pride flag may or may not be inspired by me. <laughs> And if you are new to my channel, hi, I'm Oliver, and I am trans, which is why I wanted to make this character something that looks a little bit like me. I just wanted to make this trans character something that I could see myself in, but also that being said, I didn't want to just draw myself <laughs> for this. And so what I actually did is that I took features of me, but then changed it a little bit. Like I took my hair and took like the general idea of the hairstyle but made it a little bit different and like I changed the hair because I have dyed red hair and so I gave this person pink hair. <laughs> I made the skin tone in the same kind of hue but I made it like darker. Another thing that made this guy look not like me was the fact that I gave him a different personality because when I would draw myself, I wouldn't really draw myself in- I guess I would draw myself in a similar pose, but I wouldn't really give myself that facial expression or anything. All of like the slightly different characteristics combined with a very different personality made it look really different. Two people with two different personalities would like sit in different ways and they would convey the same emotion in different ways. And so changing the personality was also another thing that really helped differentiate me from him. And it was just really fun to take characteristics that I have and then change them slightly. And when you do that with enough characteristics, it ends up looking like a completely different character. <laughs> I had a little bit of trouble finding contrast within like the hair and the skin because I knew I had wanted to make the hair pink but also because of the shade of pink that I chose. It made it a little bit difficult because I wanted to darken the skin. It was really hard to like find that sort of contrast because if you were to make this whole thing like black and white with the original hair and skin tone that I had, that would be very similar shades of gray. And so I think I ended up making the hair lighter and the skin darker than what I had originally planned. And I think that that helped it out a lot. And then I made the shirt completely blue and I made the pants white because I thought that that would be a neat outfit. <laughs> Honestly, this looks like something that I would wear a lot if I had these clothes. I have similar clothes. So again, going back to being modeled after me, since it is modeled after me, it was really fun to make. <laughs> I also really am happy with the way that the hair turned out in this one. I feel like the way I draw hair is one of the more identifiable parts of my art style, but I also feel like at the same time my traditional hair and my digital hair looks different from one another, and so I want to work on my digital hair to make it look more like how I would draw it traditionally. Mostly because like I color differently when it comes to digital art, but I'm really 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 happy <laughs> with the way that this hair turned out. It just looks so fluffy and soft and oh <laughs> is any character based off of the non-binary flag was actually the most difficult design out of all of these because there's no real like non-binary identifying thing like if you think of a dress you usually think of like femininity and when you think of like a suit you would think of masculinity it's also a little bit difficult because like a lot of non-binary people at least the non-binary people that i see lean more towards like masculine or feminine of course non-binary people can express themselves however they see fit but since i am only making one character it would be impossible for me to represent both masculine non-binary people and feminine non-binary people so i decided to make a non-binary person smack dab in the middle and normally when I'm designing a character, I always think of what sex they were born as because even if the character is trans or non-binary, it can help me draw the body because you think about where they are in their transition and so it can really like affect the way that they look as a character. But for this character, since I was going strictly androgynous, that kind of thinking kind of just held me back a little bit. And so instead of doing that, I just, I didn't think anything about what this character was born as, what their voice would sound like, their past or just anything. For this, I strictly just thought of things that I liked and thought would look good on a gender neutral looking person and slapped it on the thing. And then that's how <laughs> that came about. And honestly, I think that that's best because 
Now this way everyone can just have their own interpretation on this character. They can think that if they were born female, if they were born male, if they're this, if they're that. Really I just think that this character is open to interpretation unlike a lot of the other ones that I drew. So that's cool, at least I think so. As for what I actually ended up making this character look like, there's no real reason behind like the way they ended up looking. Like I said, I just kind of picked things that I thought would look good. I would think of one like the curly hair and I would be like, I think that would look nice with freckles. And then after that I would be like, I think some sort of like suit looking jacket would look really cool. But then I was like, okay, well that's more masculine so I'm going to add shorts, which is a more feminine thing. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain my process with that kind of stuff because for me it's just a natural progression of getting from point A to point B. But if you're still confused, let me know in the comments and I'll try to explain that a little bit better. Also at this point I was kind of running out of pose ideas because I was drawing so many people sitting there and so I was trying to think of like different ways to draw a person sitting there. In this pose it was the arms that was giving me the hardest time. I don't know why, <laughs> but I don't know, I couldn't really think of a way to have the arms look good in this pose. Even though the non-binary person took me the least time to draw out of all the other illustrations, it's still one of my favorites. I really like the end result. It also helps that I really like the color scheme of the non-binary pride flag. I just think those colors look so nice together. Lastly, I have the asexual pride flag. And before I get into it, <laughs> I know that there's a lot of debates about whether or not asexual people are a part of the LGBT community. I personally think that they are, but I can definitely see where people are coming from when they say that they aren't. And I ask that no matter what you believe, please be respectful in the comments. Okay, cool. Anyways, <laughs> so like the day before I was filming drawing this one, I had no idea <laughs> what I was going to do. For this one, I was just really stuck and I had zero concept as to what I was going to do. And it's like for all the rest of the ones, even if I had like a vague idea, it doesn't matter how vague it was, I still had an idea. But for this one, I was just completely lost. And I honestly couldn't tell you how I came up with the concept for this character, but as soon as I thought of it, it was perfect. I think it might have been because I was at Goodwill recently and I found a sweater that looked a lot like his sweater vest and I was like, yes, the asexual sweater vest, let's do it. And then this happened. <laughs> so pretty much I had no idea what I was going to do, but as soon as I came up with the concept, I thought it was really perfect and designing the character from there just came really easily. So at that point, it was really just a matter of taking what I had in my head and putting it in the paper. For this one, the hardest part was actually the shading. Normally what I do to shade is I have all of my colors on one layer and then I make a layer above that, use a clipping mask, and then I set that layer to multiply. And then I add colors on top of that to make it look like it's shaded. And I always do that just because it helps make the shading look a little bit more cohesive because since it's all one color. I just think it's a nice way to like tie a drawing in together, especially if you use a similar color that's like in the main color scheme. But for this one, since a lot of the colors were so dark, it was hard to like make the shading look not terrible. <laughs> for the highlights, I had the opposite problem. And how I do highlights is I do a similar thing with the shading, but instead of setting it to multiply, I set it to luminosity, which I think might be a paint tool side exclusive blending mode. I'm not quite sure, but that's what I do. And I always use the same colors in the highlights that I do the shading. Unlike the shading, the highlights were too obvious. <laughs> they were too bright and it was just a real big struggle trying to like make it work. So like the shading wasn't prominent enough but then the highlights were too prominent and it was a little bit of a mess. <laughs> that was something that I really had to work around but in the end I think it really looks nice and I'm really happy with how this one turned out too. I feel like I'm saying that for all of them, but I can't help it. I love them all. They're all my new children. <laughs> In the line art phase, the asexual one looked a lot like one of my OC's bishop, just without the glasses, <laughs> like a grown-up version of him. And so I just decided to make a complete opposite color scheme of him. One, to follow the asexual flag, obviously, <laughs> and two, just for my own sake, to make it not look like him. <laughs> but yeah, with that, we are yeah. Oh, snap. And that was my last illustration that I have for you today. Let me know what you guys thought of this. Let me know if I did a good job, or let me know what you would do differently, and let me know which one is your favorite. I also added background elements, by the way, just off screen, because I didn't want to make this video really long, but anyways, <laughs> there they are. There they are done. If you like these designs, they will also be available on my Redbubble shop as prints and stickers, and maybe something else if I last minute decide to put it on something. <laughs> 
So that will be linked in the description below if you want to get one of those. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing because I am going to be making a Pride themed video every single week this week, which I'm really excited for. I have it all planned out and I'm so happy to be doing it. <laughs> If you liked the art in this video, you can also subscribe for that because I make art videos every single week. I say that next week actually isn't an art video, but um, yeah, it's mostly art videos. <laughs> My social media is on screen now and also linked in the description below if you want more of me in your life. I am most active on Instagram, so I can definitely consider following me there over any place else. And there is a video on screen now, as well as in the iCard for you to check out. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed my pride children, and I will see you next week. <laughs> Bye.